Till now, I've added quite a few upgrades to my Ender 3 Pro. It's been really fun going down the upgrade rabbit hole. And today I wanted to go over some minor upgrades that I think were great quality of life changes, which didn't cost too much time or money. The first of which is the glass bed. I got packages of two beds with clips for $25 off Amazon. Now I don't think it's absolutely necessary to get a glass bed as I've gotten great results from the standard magnetic flex mat, but this does make bed leveling a lot easier. There are some things to note while using the glass bed though. Uh, first is on a clean glass surface, the side that is touching the glass bed, the, the print there will be very shiny. And a lot of people actually like the glossy look of it. And if you don't like it, uh, there are ways to mitigate that by using tape or glue. And that brings me to my next point where because of this really smooth surface, especially on a clean surface, uh, you might sometimes have problems with bed adhesion because the surface is just too slick. And the, if you have it on a fast printer setting, then it's not going to have enough stronghold where you just lift off the print as your, your printer is moving. So what I like to use is some Elmer's uh, stick glue or any kind of glue stick you find at a craft store. Now I just put uh, the, the glue stick and have a slight layer around the print area and that's usually good enough um, though it does make uh, some prints more difficult to come off and in which case uh, there are two things that you can do one is by using some alcohol or Windex you can try to reduce the uh, not completely clean off the glue but reduce the glue to a point where it's a little bit less strong but still tacky and that will be perfectly fine it will give you the, the bed adhesion without completely sticking to the print the second is if you already feel like the print is already too tough just put a little bit of soap and water or some alcohol around the print i'll let it sit for a second and it'll come right off so it's not too difficult to use i've used it uh quite a few times and even though there are times where I thought they, it was really stuck I just needed to uh, let the uh, soap do its thing and then it'll come right off. Next I got some upgraded bed springs. I got a pack of 10 for around 10 bucks but you can easily find cheaper ones. These springs feel much more rigid than the sock springs. I originally didn't think much about them but they made things quite convenient. Since they are more resistant to changes than the stock springs I find that I spend less time readjusting my bed. I see some folks use solid spacers instead, but I still stick with the springs. If you like using the spacers, let me know. The next one is more of a personal preference. I have a spool mounted on the side, and I even printed a roller here that uses bearings to make it easier to move. The important part is that the spool is connected to the base of the printer. I did not like having the spool mounted on top of the frame because I didn't like having that weight so high up. An average spool was around a kilogram or 2.2 pounds, and I could see a little movement during the print when it was mounted up there. This side mount also makes it easier to run the filament into the extruder like I have here. Uh, I still use a filament guide and I think the filament guide is a great uh, thing to print so it doesn't rub against the z-axis. Uh, I also replaced the uh, filament extruder uh, uh, contraption up here. Uh, I forgot what it's called but it's like uh, made of plastic so I replaced it with an all metal one. And the reason why I replaced it with all metal one is because as you can see here, even though they made this part right here having a brass uh, connector point, if you look on the other side where the filament comes through, it's still plastic. And if you look at this hole, like uh, it's actually deformed. Um, I'm not sure if you can see here, but it's not a perfect circle. And same thing on this side too. Uh, and this is actually degrades a lot. Um, I see on the forums all the time that people talk about how this thing fails pretty pretty quickly uh, because of the rubbing of the filament and it just makes makes the, the filament go in much more difficult. So I replaced it with the all metal one. Ever since I replaced it with all metal one, it was much more easy to get the filament in and out and there wasn't any risk of ever it failing because you know, the filament isn't, isn't going to rub against the metal and, and deform it that quickly compared to the, this plastic. Here I have my Raspberry Pi 3 running AutoPrint and it's connected to the printer uh, directly to the main board. It also has a Raspberry Pi camera attached. You can use any webcam or USB camera as well. It usually sits right here and helps me keep watch over my print. Now if you don't have an AutoPrint or don't know what it is yet, I think it's a must have because it just makes the whole printing experience a lot easier. 
Now I've shown this many times in my other videos, but this time I want to showcase what Octoprints looks like and why it's so useful. So the way it works is that my Raspberry Pi is running Octoprint as a server, which connects to my network over Wi-Fi. I just simply have to connect to it from any browser on my computer or phone and can access this interface. Uh, you can also make it as secure or unsecure as you like. Now this interface allows me to check the print status and upload prints directly on, from my computer. It also keeps track of my successful and failed prints, as well as the temperature of my bed and nozzle. Now, aside from the standard options, uh, you can also go into the settings and install your own plugins for Octoprint. And there are a ton of community uh, plugins that are really great. One of them is the bed visualizer. Now, this one isn't totally necessary because you can see the numbers from the terminal itself, but having the raw numbers and having something to visually look at are totally different. And when you can see it, it really helps with the bed leveling and you can be able to quickly inspect to make sure that your bed is uh, close enough to level that, that you can continue printing. And it's just nice to have. Uh, another thing that uh, we have here is the webcam tab. Now the webcam is connected to my camera obviously and it's showing a live feed of my print. And this allows me to monitor things uh, even when I'm not near my printer. Uh, I can be in my bed and just taking a look at what's going on uh, and that way I can quickly stop the print if I think that it's going to mess up. There are even some great plugins uh, that even monitor uh, the, using the webcam to see if something looks wrong, it can automatically stop your print. Now, uh, that's a whole different thing that I'm not going to go into now, but if you go do, do check out the plugins that the community has and play around them when you can. Um, another great thing that people do with the, having a webcam is also using it to make time-lapse video. And time-lapse videos are a great fun thing to do, especially if you do a lot of modeling, printing. Uh, and it's just overall a fun thing that uh, a lot of people like to do. So that's pretty much all the upgrades I wanted to share in this little video. Um, these are just the ones I found most practical and gave me the most for my money. I have other upgrades which are more aesthetics than anything and they're not as practical. Um, I do hope it was useful to see what I have in my printer and I'd be interested in hearing about the upgrades you found most practical. So until next time, stay dorky.